Almost five decades after Eugene Cernan, commander of the Apollo 17 mission, became the last man to set foot on the moon in December of 1972, NASA formally announced the beginning of a new era of lunar exploration. The Artemis program was launched in 2017 to revitalize the U.S. space program, and its short-term goal is to return humans to the moon by 2024, with a particular emphasis on landing the first woman on the satellite. However, the program's tight deadlines have raised concerns about its feasibility by scientists and skeptics. Still, NASA remains unfazed and has admitted that its long-term objectives include setting up a sustainable human presence on the moon, building up a lunar economy, and even to begin setting up the groundwork for future crewed missions to Mars. Returning to the Moon Humans have not left Earth's orbit since 1972, when the Apollo 17 mission last returned from the Moon. Then, over 30 years later, President George W. Bush announced the Vision for Space Exploration, a new initiative to send humans back to the satellite. Over the years, NASA's deep space efforts have changed names, objectives, and deadlines several times. Then, on December 11, 2017, President Donald Trump's administration issued the Space Policy Directive 1, a call from the President to return to the Moon and start planning for Mars. According to the Presidential Memoranda on Reinvigorating America's Human Space Exploration Program, the administration wanted NASA to, quote, lead an innovative and sustainable program of exploration with commercial and international partners to enable human expansion across the solar system and to bring back to Earth new knowledge and opportunities. Beginning with missions beyond low Earth orbit, the United States will lead the return of humans to the Moon for long-term exploration and utilization, followed by human missions to Mars and other destinations. Two years later, Vice President Mike Pence officially directed NASA to go back to the Moon by 2024 at the earliest. Artemis The Artemis program was launched immediately after Pence's directive, becoming the latest United States-led international human spaceflight program. In Greek mythology, Artemis was Apollo's twin sister and goddess of the moon. Today, the ancient deity personifies NASA's 21st century path to the moon. According to NASA, quote, We're going back to the moon for scientific discovery, economic benefits, and inspiration for a new generation of explorers, the Artemis generation. While maintaining American leadership and exploration, we will build a global alliance and explore deep space for the benefit of all. The program's main short-term goal is to return humans to space and land the first woman on the moon, as well as the first person of color on the lunar south pole by 2024. Midterm objectives later in the decade include establishing an international expedition team and a sustainable and more permanent human presence on the moon. The Artemis program also hopes to lay the foundations for private companies to invest and build in the lunar economy and eventually launch crewed missions to Mars. The effort is being carried out by NASA and other American commercial spaceflight contractors such as Lockheed Martin, Blue Origin, and SpaceX, in partnership with the European Space Agency and several space agencies from other nations. The governing Artemis Accords, established in October of 2020, remain open for signature to other countries who wish to join the program. Missions On February 4, 2021, President Joe Biden's administration endorsed the Artemis effort, securing the project until at least the next decade. The Artemis program will be based around the Space Launch System, or SLS, to send the Orion spacecraft into space. According to NASA, quote, The Space Launch System will send astronauts aboard the Orion spacecraft nearly a quarter million miles from Earth to lunar orbit. Astronauts will dock Orion at the Gateway and transfer to a human landing system for expeditions to the surface of the Moon. They will return to the orbital outpost to board Orion again before returning safely to Earth. The SLS is a super heavy lift expendable launch vehicle worth $21.2 billion, and it's the most powerful rocket ever built by the organization. The system has been under development since 2011 and replaced the Ares 1 and Ares 5 launch vehicles from the canceled Constellation program. The program will begin with Artemis 1, an uncrewed flight to test both the SLS and Orion, followed by the Artemis 2 mission, the first SLS and Orion test flight with a human crew. In fact, Artemis 1 through Artemis 4 missions have already been planned, and later missions have been proposed. Each primary mission will increase in complexity, and they are all scheduled more than a year apart, while separate support missions will deliver other necessary material. 
On December 9, 2020, then-Vice President Pence announced the first group of 18 astronauts, nine men and nine women, chosen for the Artemis team. Some of these astronauts will fly on the earlier Artemis mission to the moon, while others will be part of the first crews to fly to Mars in the future. NASA in Mars As the White House and NASA established in 2017, the Artemis program is about much more than getting humans back on the lunar surface for the first time in half a century. According to former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, quote, We will use the moon as the stepping stone for our next greatest leap, human exploration of Mars. The moon is a perfect foundation for a possible future program that is entirely based on Mars. In both instances, the goal isn't simply to plant an American flag and return to Earth, but to firmly establish a permanent presence for people to live and work on the moon. According to the article, if we want to send astronauts to Mars, we must go back to the moon first, written by Clive Neal, a geologist at the University of Notre Dame and an expert in lunar exploration. Mars and the moon share a large percentage of critical activities and technologies, and the first Artemis missions can serve as testing ground for future Mars exploration. One primary example is water, and testing out processes like mining, purification, possible sewerage, and other life support necessities. According to Neil, since the moon is a more extreme environment than Mars, quote, if it works on the moon, it'll work on Mars. Although at first many supporters were concerned that the U.S. space program would be affected by other budget priorities in the new administration, so far the Democratic administration seems to be on board. As of 2021, the development of the space launch system and Orion spacecraft are almost complete. Reversing course in the ambitious project would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, as there's also a lot of international buy-in with the European Union, Japan, Canada, and possibly Russia. These countries are all set to play a role in the development of lunar bases structures. Still, not all of the plans are set in stone. Although NASA's published Artemis outline clearly states that the organization intends to return Americans to the moon by 2024, it's remarkably low on details on how it expects to meet the technological benchmarks necessary for a sustainable moon base that would help humankind get to Mars within the next decade. Even if a new moon landing were to occur, it would still take a lot of determination, years of effort, and billions of dollars to finally leap from the moon to the red planet. However, NASA is confident about its objectives. As NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine stated, quote, we're going back to the moon for scientific discovery, economic benefits, and inspiration for a new generation of explorers. As we build up a sustainable presence, we're also building momentum towards those first human steps on the red planet. Thank you for watching our dark space video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels, and let us know your thoughts about the Artemis program in the comments below. Do you think a new era of space exploration is coming?